Math 31, welcome to example six. Here is where the real fun is about to begin. We're gonna pick up something called the conjugate zeros theorem. And it's at this point I wanna start making the distinction between zeros and x-intercepts. So for this entire section and really the entire class, I've been saying zeros and x-intercepts are the same thing. And, and for the most part, they are. But here's where we're gonna get into a slight discrepancy. So when we talk about x-intercepts, this means I can graph these points on the xy plane. So I can graph points on the xy or the Cartesian coordinate system, just like we always have been. And I've been trying to scream at us like, hey, you have to have an x and a y coordinate. And all of that's true, but we're gonna branch into complex zeros. And here's where I'll start to really make the distinction that we have zeros and not x-intercepts. So the reason I'll say that these are zeros and not x-intercepts is because these values will zero out our function, but we can't graph them because they're imaginary. And that's why I won't call them an x-intercept. So, so let me read the conjugate zeros theorem and then I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate what I just said. So if f of x, defined a polynomial function having only real coefficients, and if this complex number, a plus bi, is a zero of f of x, where a and b are real numbers, then its conjugate, a minus bi, is also a zero of the function. And here I am using the phrase zero, meaning if I plug a plus bi into my function, or I plug a minus bi, in, a minus bi into my function, I do get zero back out as a value. So it will zero out my function, but it fails to be an x-intercept because I can't graph imaginary numbers in the real Cartesian coordinate system. So this will be the one time that I'll, I'll just be using zeros as the, as the term rather than x-intercepts. So if we just take a step back, I know that's a lot I just said, but what this theorem is trying to tell you is zeros for polynomials, they come in conjugate pairs. So if a plus bi is a zero, then automatically you know a minus bi is a zero. And once you enter the complex world uh, of trying to find zeros, it, it just becomes that much more uh, intricate and tricky. So here we go with example six, we're gonna find all of the zeros of this polynomial, and I'm gonna give you your starting point. So first thing I notice, I have a degree four polynomial. That means I need four zeros. There might be a couple zeros with some multiplicities, but I'm looking for four. And here is my starting point. Now, if I didn't give you a starting point, we could use the rational root theorem, right? And we could just say, well, I know all the factors of 50, um, that would be my p's. All the factors of one would be my q's, and I can look at those ratios of p's to q's and generate a list. But I do have a starting point here. Now, because of this conjugate zeros theorem, if two plus i is a zero, I automatically know two minus i is also a zero. All right, so now it's up to you which one you wanna start with in terms of synthetic division. I'm just gonna start with two plus i, all right? If this is a zero, I put it in the house, and then let's look at our coefficients. Um, just taking a look at the powers on x, four, three, two, one, zero, I'm good, so let me just put the coefficients. I don't need a placeholder. Now synthetic division is going to work the exact same way, but it is trickier when you have a complex zero here. And I should get zero, all right? That's what I was told, two plus i was a zero. So here we go. The one comes down, all right? One times two plus i is two plus i. Now if you're adding these terms, right? Negative one plus two plus i, you add like terms. So negative one plus two is one. And then there's zero i here, zero i plus i is i. The next thing I need to do is multiply 2 plus i times 1 plus i. And that's where I'm going to start to just have a little work on the side. So 2 plus i times 1 plus i. Well, we did this way back in chapter 2. So let's multiply these conjugates, uh, not conjugates, excuse me, these binomials. Um, so I'm going to FOIL. We've got 2, outer is 2i, inner is i, last is i squared. Remember, i squared is always equal to negative one. So this is, I look at three i um, plus two minus one. So I am looking at, if I write this up, I'll go one plus 
3i. Okay, so I'm gonna go one plus 3i here. When I add these terms together, negative 17 plus one is negative 16, and then I have 3i here. Okay, now I need to do two plus i times negative 16 plus 3i, so let's see what we have going on there. All right, two plus i times negative 16 plus 3i, here we go. Um, outer is negative, th oh, excuse me, first is negative 32. 6i minus 16i, so let me write those. Last is plus 3i squared. Okay, so I am looking at um, 6 minus 16, I got a minus 10i. This will be negative 32 and this will be minus three. So I will ultimately have negative 35. All right, oops, you can't see all that. Excuse me, let me, let me move this up so that we have all the space. Okay, so I've got negative 35. Ooh, I'm gonna crunch this in here, what? minus 10i. All right, so here we go, 55 minus 35 is 20, and then I have minus 10i. All right, so then I need to do 2 plus i times 20 minus 10i. All right, here we go. So 2 plus i times 20 minus 10i. All right, so first is 40, outer is minus 20i, Inner is plus 20i, last is minus 10i squared. Uh, we see the, uh, the i's are canceling, that's great. Um, negative 10i squared is like plus 10, so this becomes 50. So I put 50 here, oh and sure enough I get zero. And I should have, that's great. Okay, so at this point, I know two plus i is a zero. All right, and I also know two minus i is a zero. If, if you had wanted to factor this, I'm gonna put a little aside here. Just, just if you wanted to factor it before we handle the two minus i, you could have done this. I don't necessarily recommend it, but you could have said this is x minus two plus i, and then I started with a quartic, so I would have a cubic left, so I'd have x cubed plus one plus i x squared minus, oops, no, plus I'll do negative 16 plus three i x, and then plus 20 minus 10 i. So if you wanted to factor it, it could look like that, but that's just pretty ugly and it's not worth it just yet. I'm gonna hold off on this because I still have one more zero. So I wanna um, use synthetic division off of this zero before I start to try and factor it. So I'll come back to factoring. It's just not worth it at this point because these coefficients are so ugly to look at because you have these eyes in here. So I'm just gonna hold tight on that. This, this factor will show up again. But I, I, can, I can simplify this. So let me erase this. All right, and then let's use the fact that we also know the conjugate to two plus i is a zero. So I'm gonna plug in the next zero to synthetic division. I'm gonna use two minus i, and I'm not gonna do it off of my original. I'm gonna do it off of what I've already broken down, right? So I'm gonna do these coefficients because I've already broken this down with one round of synthetic division. Now, for this, I should also get zero. All right, if two plus i is a zero, it's conjugate two minus i is a zero, so let's see what we have here. All right, the one comes down, two minus i times one is two minus i. Well, this is nice. So the i's cancel, and I'm just gonna get three. All right, when I multiply two minus i to three, I'm gonna get, what, six minus three i? Well, that's nice again. You notice how things are starting to cancel out. That should happen. I get negative 10. When I plug in here, I get negative 20 plus 10 i. Sure enough, it zeroes out. And, and you'll see that my coefficients for my, my, what will eventually be my quadratic term, they're so much nicer. That's why I said just wait to factor it until you get through the conjugate pair. Usually things turn out a whole, light, a whole lot nicer when you just wait for a moment. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and scooch this up a little bit more and let's see what we have. All right, so at this point, if I wanna start factoring, okay, we knew two plus i was a zero. So one factor will be x minus that. 
and you want to make sure you put that binomial in parentheses because I'm going to need to distribute that negative to this entire term. My other factor, or actually I knew 2 minus i was a 0, so x minus that 0 is a factor. All right, and if I started with a quartic and I took out a factor and I took out a factor, that means I'm down 2, so 4 minus 2, at least the power on this would be x squared plus 3x minus 10. And the great thing about this is, hey, I can figure out how to solve or to break this one down. I can either factor it, complete the square, or use the quadratic formula. So let's see what we have here. I have f of x. I'm going to distribute this negative. I'm looking at x minus 2 minus i. This would be x minus 2 plus i. All right, and this, um, what multiplies to 10 and adds to 3? That's x plus 5 times x minus 2. Okay, so our directions were to find all of the zeros. So here are my zeros. I know that 2 plus i is a 0. That was given. I know its conjugate has to be a 0. From the factor of x plus 5, I know negative 5 is a 0. And then from the factor of x minus 2, I know 2 is a 0. Now, which of those turns into x-intercepts? The only ones that turn into x-intercepts are negative 5, 0, and 2, 0, because those are the only real zeros. All right, and let's just plug this in on our calculator and make sure that my work here matches what the graph would have said. All right, so let me go ahead and I'm going to plug this function in. Now, keep in mind, this is a quartic with a positive leak coefficient, so it should look something like a w. All right, oh, I have a quartic in there, so let me delete this. Let's see, I need minus x cubed, minus 17x squared, plus 55x minus 50. All right, so I've got my function in. Let me hit zoom six. All right, and I am seeing two zeros. I see one here at negative 5, and I see one here at positive 2, right? So I have that going on. Let me just check. Second calc, 1. Let me plug in negative 5. I do get 0 back out. Let me also plug in 2. I get 0 back out, so I've confirmed that those are zeros. And really, if I was doing this from scratch, where I didn't have 2 plus i as my starting point, the first thing I would have done was plug this function into my calculator and found these two zeros. And then I would have used synthetic division to figure out how to break this down. And I want to go through that because that might seem a little abstract right now. But let me go through breaking this down without being told 2 plus i was a zero. So I want you to see how I could get these same results if I was given nothing to start with and I used my calculator. But I want you to keep in mind, if I plug this in my calculator there, I see negative 5 is a zero and I see two is a zero. So if that was the case, let me put a new piece of paper over this. All right, if that were the case, I would use synthetic division. So let me go five, this would be one, negative one, negative 17, 55, negative 50. All right, so let's go use this. We get one, and I, I should be getting zero. So one, we'll go five, four, 23, 15. Did I do something incorrect? because I should have gotten zero. This would be, wait, one. Well, why is this not working? I swear math works, but that didn't work. Was it negative five? Oh gosh, that's why. It was negative five. So you see me panicking, thinking, oh my goodness, math doesn't work. Because when I was about to do this, this is going to be 350, this is going to be 300, which wasn't zero, so I knew something was up. So I had the wrong number. Let me rerun this with the correct numbers. And I'm just a little bit happy to see math works. Okay, so let's do this again with a negative 5. And now things should work. All right, 1, we go negative 5, negative 6, 30. This is, what, 13. Let's see what is negative 5 times 13. We get negative 65. This is negative 10. This is positive 50. This is 0. Okay, that's, that's better. And I believe our other 0, so that I don't get the signs wrong. 
um, it was two. Okay, so let's try two now. And I'm gonna do it off of the already factored version, not the original. All right, I should also get zero here. So we go one, two, negative four, negative eight, five, and 10. Okay, so at this point, I know f of x is equal to x plus five times x minus two. And again, I started with a quartic, but now I'm down by two linear factors. And the coefficients here, this would start with an x squared minus four x plus five. And there's actually no way to factor this. If you tried to factor, and let me show you, because it's a good exercise to go through, you would put an x and an x here and a five and a one. And then you might tell me, hey, Miss A, you're wrong. You can do a minus five and a plus one. But be careful, the last, look, at it's negative five times positive one. That is not positive five. This did not break. So if you wanted to find the zeros off of this, let's use the quadratic formula. All right, let's see what happens when we use the quadratic formula. Because at this point, if I'm keeping track of my zeros, right, I've got negative five and I've got two, and then I don't know about this. So let's use the quadratic formula. This would be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two a. All right, so I am looking at four plus or minus, all right, this is gonna be 16 minus 20, which is negative four over two. So I think you're seeing the imaginary zero show up, right? So then we have four plus or minus 2i over 2. If I use bunny ears, I'm going to get 2 plus or minus i, and there are my other two zeros. All right, so you could have done it that way, and I would argue it's actually easier, right? It's easier to do synthetic division off of real numbers and then use the quadratic formula to find the imaginaries, but I also want you to see how to do it using your starting point with imaginary numbers and then having some fun with synthetic division. Okay, so you've got two ways of doing this problem, and we've talked a little bit about the distinction between zeros and x-intercepts. So all four of these numbers zero out my function, but only two of them turn into x-intercepts because we can't graph imaginary, or I should say complex numbers on the real, uh, real Cartesian coordinate system. All right, so with that, we're gonna take all that we've learned and I'm just gonna give you some polynomials and we're gonna break them down. No starting point, no nothing, all right? So we've got two of those we're gonna try and I will see you in a bit, bye.